I thank Dios Martin Est for his scientific explanation of homophobia. This is something which I think, or which seems to be quite rare, someone trying to explain scientifically or from an evolutionary perspective where homophobia comes from. Mostly you see explana sociological explanations, psychological explanations uh, that merely say something like homophobia is based on fear. It's a feeling of fear, the fear of homosexuals. And uh, this fear leads to some aversion against them. But uh, this is not, th this doesn't tell us anything. This do th well, this does tell us some, some from a vi very anthropic perspective, that it tells us something. But uh, from an evolutionary perspective, it doesn't tell us anything about how homophobia could develop, about what led to homophobia, and uh, above all, how homophobia survived. So, uh, Dios Martin Est uh, uh, gave, gave an interesting, g g tried to give us some insight into the evolution of homophobia. I'd like to criticize his hypothesis, as he wished people to do. Um, where do I start? I will start uh, criticizing the pre the, uh, w uh, an important premise he used. Among his premises was that uh, homosexuality has no advantage, evolutionarily speaking. And on this hypothesis, he he built up his hypothesis about the about the the generation, or the survival, or the 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 adaptiveness of homophobia. People who are homophobic who prevent homosexuality will have a better chance to to reproduce, because homosexuality has no advantages reproductively. This is his. This is what he said. Uh, but uh, this premise is obviously wrong because if homosexuality had no uh, reproductive advantage or no indirect reproductive advantage or at least some kind of somatic for, for, for your life, some, some, some advantage, then there, there would be no chance of homosexuality uh, surviving. But it does survive. Uh, Richard Dawkins has a website where he, where he is asked the question about how homosexuality can survive. If obviously, well, uh, there is a Darwinian paradox: the more homosexual uh, you are, or the the, the more uh, homosexual copulations you perform, the less likely is it that you pass this behavioral trait on to uh, to a lot of offspring. So, how does it survive? Well, it must survive somehow, because if, if it were uh, as Dawkins then explains, if it were some random mutation, homos the trait of homosexuality, then we would find one homosexual or less than one homosexual in a million or 20 million, I, I can't remember. Well, about this, the, but even if it's one, uh, if it's less than one per per just a million, then uh, you see that this that 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 the, that the hypothesis cannot be right. It cannot be some random mutation, and there must be some some evolutionary advantage. And what I will try to do now is try to explain homophobia from an evolutionary perspective, and take into account or to take into consideration that homosexuality has uh, a survive has survival benefits and this is the way I'd like to do that I'm going to present a paper that I wrote and that has about the subject about exactly this subject about how to reconcile uh, scientific explanations of homosexuality and scientific explanations of homophobia. This article has been rejected by numberless journals, by numberless natural sciences, uh, biological uh, uh, or behavioral sciences journals, evolutionary psychology journals, and 
since it has been rejected by all these, I try to choose a different medium of presenting the, my result, my explanation, and I will do that now. Let's see the article. I'll give. I'll just read it and and comment on on some important points. So now I will explain to you how homophobia developed. Let's see. Let's see the time. Time elapsed. Six minutes. Yeah, we will do the first pages. I give you the abstract. The article presents a mind-bending game theoretic dilemma which arises from a sociobiological finding on male homosexuality. It follows the pattern of a paradox first evoked by Fisher's some st statistician, statistics guy, by Fisher's hypothesis, counterfactual hypothesis probably, that smoking does not cause lung cancer, but that, some co but that a common cause leads to both the phenomena, to both lung cancer uh, and to the, to the habit of smoking. My dilemma is, however, not vulnerable to an important type of objection against Fisher's problem. The dilemma may occur in the actual world and may give further support for the validity of the hypothesis that male homosexuality is linked to an increase in maternal female fecundity because several of its possible solutions may, on the basis of this hypothesis, straightforwardly explain the selection of homophobic traits. This is one hypothesis. Homosexuality evolves because it is correlated with uh, a, a boost in fertility among maternal female relatives. So the same genes that, that make, this is one hypothesis about the evolution of homosexuality, the same genes that make a woman more fertile, make a, make a male, uh, ma sorry, make a female more fertile, make a male uh, homosexual. You can think of it as a gene that makes you uh, crazy for or, or crazy about crazy about guy uh, crazy about men and it has the same effect in females uh, as it has in males so Camperio Chani Camperio Chani from uh, Padova University of Padova Camperio Camperio Chani et al.'s solution to the Darwinian paradox of the survival of male homosexuality poses a threat of yet another paradoxical constellation, this time in game theory. Camperio Chani et al. showed that homosexuality may bear reproductive advantages beyond some of the merely somatic survival benefits described by Kirkpatrick, because the same genetic factors that give rise to the trait in males might boost the fecundity, as I said, in their maternal female relatives. Indeed, an empirical result, maternal female relatives of homosexual males turned out to be significantly more fecund and to be mothering mo homosexuals more frequently than those of heterosexual males. It is unclear, however, what exact causal relation obtains when a human male acts upon his sexual identity tendencies. Just a correlation was found. In Fisher's words, the statistician, the fact is that if two factors A and B are associated, it may be that A is an important cause of B, it may be that B is an important cause of A, it may be that something else, let us say X, is an important cause of both. Therefore, this correlation leads to a type of game theoretic dilemma, first evoked by Fisher's hypothesis that smoking does not cause lung cancer, but that smoking and lung cancer are caused by one and the same third entity, for example, the person's genotype, provided that it is unchanging as of fertilization. See you in the second part. <laughs>